you're doing everything right with intermittent fasting and one meal a day. Okay, you're making changes and things are working, but there's one really important thing you need to be paying attention to and it all comes down to a really important study. Now, I promise you, I'm going to make this simple and fun. That's why I have castle drawings and all kinds of stuff. We're gonna get into it, but don't be afraid of some of the big words that are here because I promise it's going to be really simple. It all just comes down to timing. You see, unfortunately, we're seeing that if you consume too much, even good food at one point in time, like too consolidated, it triggers a specific metabolic response known as metaflammation. So we're gonna talk about it, we're gonna talk about how to avoid it. Rather than just scare you and tell you about something bad, I'm gonna tell you about something that we probably should be somewhat concerned with, and then I'm gonna tell you simply how to fix it, okay? So we have to go through the science first, and I promise it's going to be a lot of fun. Please do make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications. After this video, I also want you to check out Thrive Market. So if you're doing intermittent fasting, I have created specific grocery bundles for intermittent fasting. Thrive Market is a membership-based grocery store that's online. So it ends up being way cheaper than the grocery store that you'd go to, well, manually and ends up making it a lot easier to get healthy food. So I highly recommend you check them out if you're doing keto, intermittent fasting, or if you just wanna check out any of the other fun grocery bundles that I have. So link down in the description after you complete this video. All right, let's go ahead and let's go to science class for just a minute so you can get in the best shape of your life. All right, so this whole thing was published in the journal Cell. Okay, and it was originally published and written by Harvard, and it was done in 2010, but it's recently been stirred up because so many people are doing the one meal a day diet. Now, I am an avid intermittent faster, and I lost over 100 pounds utilizing intermittent fasting and keto, and I would be darned if I did not use one meal a day as a strategy for some point in time. But I did find that my results, about four years in, stalled with one meal a day. I wasn't really getting the same kind of results that I was getting earlier on. So the whole purpose of me saying this is to say, I speak from experience that if you can alter some things with one meal a day, you can end up really having better results. So I'm not anti one meal a day at all. Okay, so what this study was all about was it found that if we had too much in the way of nutrients, too much food coming in at one time, like you might possibly do with one meal a day, it triggered a specific thing called PKR, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But PKR is something that's designed to fight viruses. And it is a result of any kind of just virus coming in our body. What was interesting about the study was found when subjects consumed too much in the way of food, well, it triggered the same thing that would trigger when you had a virus, which caused a subsequent increase in inflammation. So it makes it so nutrients are absorbed as well, so you could end up with all kinds of other issues. But worst of all, in this particular case, you're gonna slow down your results, right? So what is this PKR and why is it so important and how is it going to change how we eat? Well, PKR is what is called a double-stranded RNA-dependent kinase. Okay, what does that mean? All it simply means is it only responds to viruses. So the fact that PKR was triggered by food is already weird because it usually only responds to viruses. We're all DNA dependent. Anything that's gonna respond to us, our cells, is gonna be DNA. RNA is for viruses. So this is just odd to begin with. It triggered a strong inflammation cascade. Here's how we react to viruses. We react to viruses in two ways. And this is very important because this is what's going to explain how you need to change your food, right? Okay, so we have two things. One, we activate the inflammatory response. When we have a virus that comes in our body, our immune system, our body's army, our body's soldiers go and they fight the virus, right? Okay, but it does something else too. It doesn't just externally fight the virus. It triggers the cessation of protein synthesis inside our own cells. What that means is it turns off our cells' ability to eat and grow and get nutrition simply because it's exercising its efforts to stop the virus too. So the immune system is basically like, sorry cells, you need to stop consuming food too because we're trying to starve off the virus. Here's a perfect example of what it looks like. Okay, you've got this castle here. This castle is your cell. Okay, and what's happening with this castle is you've got a viral invader, a virus coming in. Okay, and these viruses, these red viruses are trying to get in. But in an effort to stop the virus from getting in, the castle has to destroy its own bridge. So it's destroyed all the planks in the bridge across the moat so that the virus can't get in. The virus is starved out, but that also, in the process, starves out the food supply. Here we have a horse carrying food in to feed everyone in the castle, but the castle is saying, sorry, I gotta stop the horse, but I have to do that to stop the virus. I just have to kill the bridge. 
So eventually, that castle will end up starving, not necessarily dying, but starving in an effort to fight off the virus. Well, that's all great with a virus, but it's really a bummer when that happens when we simply eat too much food, right? Because what's happening? We consume too much at one sitting, and this PKR is elevated, turning off protein synthesis inside of our cells, so we're not absorbing nutrients. So then those nutrients aren't getting absorbed, and they're triggering inflammation outside in the body too, just like you would with a leaky gut. And we found that it downregulates and almost stops insulin receptor substrate one, which is something very powerful for insulin signaling. So when we eat, we need insulin signaling to occur because that insulin signaling is what tells the cell, hey, it's okay to become receptive to insulin to let nutrients in. But what if this isn't working? Then it means that nutrients can't get delivered to the cell, all because we ate too much at one sitting. This is the perfect example that can happen with one meal a day. I'm not saying one meal a day is bad. Please, 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 if you're on a healthy lifestyle track and you have a great trajectory, don't change a thing but I always wanna give you the tools. And this is so important because people are gonna make hater videos on this, but I am pro one meal a day. I want to arm you with the positive knowledge. So if you hit a stall, you might be able to evaluate what is going on, okay? So what you may wanna consider doing is rather than having one large smorgasbord of food is have two smaller meals. Switch to two meal a day versus one meal a day and split them up so you don't have this massive influx triggering this potential PKR. But let's talk about why this is happening. Okay, this is really important to know why. So the whole why behind PKR is all because excess nutrients are a metabolic stressor. Okay, too much of one thing, the body just stresses out because it can't handle it all. It's generalized mechanisms. So what that means is that it's a simple on-off switch. It's not like the body is evolving to respond to large amounts of food at one point in time. It also isn't evolving not to. Okay, so my point here is simple. It's a general response that's going to happen with anything, whether we have viruses coming in, whether we have too much food coming in, and probably a half a million other things that haven't been notated in studies. Okay, it just happens. We just are now getting to a, being able to scratch the surface and understand why. So let me give you an example of what that means because that sounds a little bit gobbledygook jargony. Okay, imagine this, the PKR, is the army's general, okay? And this general was given a giant budget, okay? But he's told, in order for you to have this budget, you have to spend all of the money. You can't have any surplus, okay? So some companies at the end of the year have a budget surplus and they go out and they spend all the money because they can't have any extra budget. Think of our body acting like that. So much immune system, it has to use all of it, okay? So what ends up happening is, continue to buy machinery, you buy weapons, you buy airplanes, you buy all the things that you need because you have money to spend. But imagine that all of a sudden you have an infinite budget. Okay, sounds good at first, you can go buy whatever you want, you can buy all the weapons, buy all the machinery, but you don't really need it. So in this case, the immune system is turned on. Okay, the immune system now has a budget, but it has an infinite budget because it's flipped on the on switch. Well, what happens? You end up buying so much stuff, you clog all your hangers, you clog all your bunkers, you're all your <laughs> everything's filled with artillery, everything's filled with planes and rockets and missiles, you, you, to the point where you are crippled. You can't even function because you have so much of a good thing, right? So it's the same process here. So then all of a sudden, you have no choice but to start breaking down your own hangers to fit the planes in. That's what's happening here. We're breaking down ourselves because we're consuming so much at one sitting. Whereas the premise of one meal a day is phenomenal because I love intermittent fasting for long periods of time, but we just need to space our meals out ever so slightly so we're not gorging ourselves, okay? There's a number of other reasons why you may want to consider going to two meal a day, but again, this is only if you are reaching a plateau. If things are working for you and you feel good, do not change things, but arm yourself with the knowledge so that you can combat your own army that is waging a war inside you when you have metaflammation. If you are gonna switch it up to two meal a day or anything like that, the first meal when you break your fast, like I've talked about in a lot of videos, should be something very light and lean. Okay, I would usually recommend uh, just a lean amount of protein, a lean protein shake, uh, no added fats, not a bunch of nutrients. I know people like to try to get their veggies in when they break a fast, but unfortunately it's really hard to digest those. That can be hard on the digestive system. So just keep it lean protein, and keep it easy, keep it a few hundred calories. 
That way, a couple hours later or whatever, when you eat your next meal or even an hour later, you're also satiated so you're not as likely to gorge yourself. But you're also just splitting up your meals and remember, protein is pretty hard to break down. So if we space up the proteins, we put ourselves in a great little spot. So that should give you what you need there. Harvard has done some pretty good science on this, so I think we can at least trust some of the research in this case. As always, I do highly recommend that you hit that subscribe button, comment if you have ideas for future videos, specifically around one meal a day, two meal a day, and intermittent fasting. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.